you know what I like most about a carriage ride? It recalls a simpler, quieter time. The gentle rocking, the clip-clop of the hooves. It's a slower, more graceful way of getting around the quarter, as the people did in the early days of the Vieux Carré. I sense the stories and the history of the old Vieux Carré differently from up in the seat of a carriage. Jean-Jacques, and who's your associate here? This is Milky Way. Milky Way is a mule, and I tell you what, I'm very proud to work with Milky Way because mules are so significant in the uh, history of New Orleans. Uh, for instance, three cars were pulled by mules until the 1890s, uh, then uh, until the 1950s. The uh, garbage trucks over here in New Orleans, the uh, carnival floats were all pulled by mules. So uh, they're a very big deal to our history. Okay, let's start out to it. All right. And one thing I want to tell you, we're turning out here on uh, Decatur Street. Okay. This was originally Levy Street. And then uh, a great American naval hero by the name of Stephen Decatur came along in the early days of Louisiana being a part of the United States. He successfully defeated the Barbary pirates at Tripoli in the Mediterranean Sea, which opened up American trading into the Mediterranean Sea, which being right here at the river is a place to honor a man who accomplished that for all the commerce uh, that took place here. This is great. Okay, let's roll. Now the interesting thing, Jean-Jacques, about uh, this early American period, a young man could get on a a sailing vessel in Baltimore, Maryland. He could come around Florida, come up the Mississippi River, step off that tall sailing vessel, and literally he could walk right up the levee here to where the steamboats were parked. A hundred a day were arriving here. And he could ask a steamboat captain, look, what about uh, selling me one bale of cotton? They'd negotiate a price. He'd go get a stevedore and a wagon, and uh, then he would take it down to where the tall sailing ships were loading up to go uh, across uh, the Atlantic Ocean, and he would say, uh, Cap, have you got room for one more bale of cotton? And they'd negotiate a deal. Then he'd walk down to what was then Levy Street, go in an oyster bar like we have here, and uh, then he would get himself maybe two, three dozen raw oysters on a half shell, you know, and wash it down with a uh, brandy or two, and then he would, uh, next morning, he would go back up and see a steamboat captain. He would say, Cap, could you sell me two bales of cotton? And so it would go on in a very short amount of time. He was uh, building one of those big houses up on St. Charles Avenue. The, the commerce here, you know, uh, for the French and for the Spanish, there was no gold on the bayou. So Louisiana wasn't a big prize to them, but Louisiana became a big prize when America got it with the steamboat, cotton, and sugar cane. Now, who's that Frenchman in the street down there? Well, this is uh, Governor Bienville. His name was Jean-Baptiste Lemoine. People called him Governor Bienville. And what I like about this statue, I, li I like that statue a lot, because you see Bienville was governor in the 1700s. And the office of governor of Louisiana changed tremendously since then. And you see it shows an American Indian. Well, American Indians back then represented a third of the population over here. So they were really a force you had to reckon with. You could not just ignore them here. Also, it shows a priest, a, a Catholic priest. And over here in Louisiana, before the Louisiana Purchase, there was no such thing as a separation of the church and the state. Interesting insight, Jean-Jacques. Let's turn down St. Louis Street and go into the French Quarter.